Okay, I'm Thomas Powell, and again, I'm telling my life story. And I was just telling people last week about the storm of Easter of 1984 when I was surrounded by lightning, and yet it didn't hit me. And I was telling you how I escaped a death trap at, um, when I was in the Mississippi Army National Guard. So anyhow, what I was saying was that a protest developed at the University of Mississippi concerning the rebel flag. And my picture came out in the newspaper there as angry blacks protesting the rebel flag and the mascot. And my picture was front and center. So that made me a target for all the white supremacist organizations in the state of Mississippi. So I was in the Office of Candidate School for 14 months. And I was headed to uh, Camp Shelby, but they changed my orders to Camp McCain. So I go to Camp McCain as a combat medical specialist because they kicked me out of the uh, military academy about two weeks before my graduation because my pa picture was in the paper. So they sent me out in the woods and um, I was there a few days and I had a visit from a judge, Woodrow Brand. He flew in his plane, it crashed on the field and I had to go pull him out the plane because I was the medic in the area. I didn't know he was coming to see me. And when I pulled him out the plane, he said, I need to talk to you later on. So that night, I went to see him, and he told me to go back to Ole Miss and apologize for complaining about the rebel flag and the mascot or else. And I jumped up and I said, what you mean or else? I'm not apologizing about anything. So later on that night, a man named Gus Ard, he was my platoon sergeant, he sold me a knife. And I told him I didn't want a knife, but he argued with me to buy the knife. And I said, man, I, don't, I only have $40. I don't want to buy tonight. And he said, well, I'm going to sell it to you for $35. And he said, it's going to be the only equalizer of men. So finally, after he kept on urging me, I bought the knife. So the next morning, about 5, 30, 6 o'clock, we went into the woods. And as I went into the woods to take a leak, I came back out. And a guy named Clyde Cunningham was driving a bulldozer. And he tried to push trees down on top of me. I'm ducking and dodging. He's trying to crush me in between trees. And I was able to duck and dodge and miss the trees falling. And then finally, I jumped out. And I got out of the trees and out of the woods. And I got on the tank trail, which they were building at Camp McCain. And I got out on the tank trail, and the bulldogs couldn't catch me. And he chased me for a minute, but he couldn't catch me because it was too wide open. So as he chased me, and he finally got off, and I pulled out the knife. And I thought about stabbing him, but then I thought if I stab this man, I'm going to go to jail for murder or for life because the only witnesses were all the white supremacists who were there surrounding me. And I was so upset and angry, I said, I'm going to go get me a drink of water 300 yards up the road. So I got in the middle of the road. I said, if they want to kill me, they could do it out in the open. And I walked for 300 yards to that water cooler. And I walked and I walked and the trucks coming by and they swerving around, they swerving around, but nobody could look me in the eye and kill me. And I walked 300 yards, I got to that water cooler and I drank that water just to let them know I wasn't afraid of them. And one of them got off the cooler, off the truck, the 290 they called it, an earth mover, an earth mover. And he got off and he said, you must have wanted that water mighty bad. And I said, yeah, I did. And that's the story of how they tried to kill me in the woods. And ever since then, you know, this white supremacist organization has been after me here and there. I don't know who all they are. I know some of them now. After years of being a lawyer, I found out a lot of them. But they're so rich and powerful, it's hard to do anything to them. But that's my story, live and direct. The names have not been changed to protect the guilty. This has been part three of a series on the life of Thomas Powell, an attorney in Jackson, Mississippi, rebel with a cause. There will be more to come on my life and true stories that they may sound fantastic, but they're all true. And nothing has been embellished. It's live and direct.